Hey, Wonder Hussy here, cruising around on another solo road trip around the Nevada hinterlands. We're still sort of in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, so I can't really travel very far. I really don't feel comfortable or responsible traveling out of state. So I'm trying to stay local, and lucky for me, there's plenty of interesting stuff locally. So in the first video of this trip, uh, I explored a really cool homestead up in the mountains, not that far from uh, where I've been staying, uh, with the wild horses and beautiful trees and flowers and grass. And oh, it's a totally different environment than where I am now. I am back out in the, well, I guess you'd call it high desert sagebrush territory. Got my trusty steed parked here waiting for me while I investigate this awesome lonely little cabin. This cabin is friggin' amazing. Now a lot of people ask me, how do you find these places you explore? This one I literally just found looking at Google Maps. Sometimes I'll put Google Maps on satellite view and just follow dirt roads up into canyons and see where they end. And well, generally if there's like a clump of trees or a bunch of roads coming together, there's something interesting <laughs> at those intersections. And that's how I found this place, just looking around. I mean, we are in the middle of friggin' nowhere. We're not that far from, uh, well, a couple places that I made videos. Marietta Ghost Town isn't that far from here. And, well, I tried to go to this cabin that I failed at accessing. Um, I can't even remember what I named that video, but I've been out to this area a couple times. But anyways, blah, blah, blah. Let's go check out this awesome little cabin. Okay, first things first, we've got an overview of the site. There's the cabin, there's a corral. I think there's a spring over there too somewhere. Uh, and then there's just some old busted up stuff over here. Uh, an old trailer and an old, uh, well, two old trailers that we'll investigate as well, time permitting. But I actually wanna go into the cabin first on this one. You know, normally I save the cabin for last because, well, I have a high emotional quotient if you know what that means. But in this case, well, it's a Saturday. And even though it's a coronavirus quarantine going on, I have seen a lot of campers and off-roaders out on the highway. And I saw a trailer parked nearby that looked like somebody is off-roading in the area. So I want to make sure I check this place out before somebody else gets here. Because, well, <laughs> disclaimer, I actually did peek in the door before I started shooting. Because to be honest, this cabin looks so nice and it's so solidly closed up that I thought, God, somebody might actually still be living here. And I didn't want to go busting into somebody's house, you know? So I peeked in just to make sure it's a volunteer cabin first. And it is, we're all clear. But that being said, it's so cute and so nice that <laughs> I want to make sure I get in there before somebody else gets to it first. Okay, so obviously I don't know anything about the history of this place. Like I said, I think there's a spring somewhere back behind the building. So that's probably why there's a ranch here to begin with. I mean, you can see it's in a super desolate valley. I mean, there is, we are really in the middle of nowhere. I know I say that a lot, but I really mean it this time. So anyway, there's like a, like a shed for storage. There's a barbecue, a chase for laying out and catching some rays, which today would be an awesome day for that. It's like in the seventies, really nice weather. But here's the, the cabin and it has three doors, which, is also part of what kind of set me back. You know, at first I thought maybe this was like summer quarters or winter quarters for like shepherds or cowboys or something, cause you never know out here, but I don't know, looking around you can clearly see like there's a big fire ring out front and what with the, the barbecues and the chaise and everything, it's clearly meant to be a place to just get away for a few days. And out front, like at any good desert getaway, we find <laughs> part of an old skull. <laughs> I am, that's not a human skull. I don't even know what that is. I don't know. It's, gonna, it's not a burrow. It's too small. Who knows? Anyways, let's go. Uh, I already tried that door. That door's locked. Middle door is obviously boarded up and got firewood piled in front of it. So that means door number three is going to be where we go in. Before we go in, though, look. <laughs> it's a barbecue on top of a trash can. That's a good way to do it. Why not? Smart. Oh, and then you can see down here. I mean, this homestead must have been pretty old because of these old rock walls. You know, that looks like it was built a long time ago. And there's some kind of other, well, maybe that used to be a corral for animals or something back in the day. Oh, and then over yonder, looks like it was maybe an outhouse. 
over here, this is actually a shower. Or maybe what used to be a shower back in the day, I don't know. I mean, I don't know where you'd get the water from if you wanted to take a shower in there now. Anyway, here's the cabin. All those little uh, tin can lids tacked up to, uh, I guess, block holes so that the wind doesn't get in. I mean, this cabin is very solidly closed up, so much so that, like I said, I thought somebody might still be living here. But then I saw this, and well, it's pretty easy to get in. Just had a screw stuck through there. So we'll make sure to close that up nice and tight when we leave. But for now, let's go inside the cabin. <laughs> hey, wait till you see inside this, it's friggin' awesome. Okay, opening the door, stepping in to this cute little cabin. In a way, this cabin kind of reminds me of the Weston cabin that I explored a few years ago in Death Valley. Maybe just because of the red and white checks, but also because there's so many things still inside it. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, when I first stepped in here, I thought, oh my gosh, is this somebody's house that I just stepped into? But then I noticed that there's a log book on the table. And well, I'm not going to try to hide the name of the cabin. There, I just hit it using the lighter. Welcome to the Horny Cattle Company's bleep, bleep, bleep. Stay for a good time, not for a long time. So that tells me that this is a volunteer cabin, and I think that's actually really good advice. Stay for a good time, not for a long time. You don't want to stay here for a week and hog the place, you know? And reading the name of this cabin, which I hid from you guys, it actually sounds familiar to me. I think somebody did email me about this place once, so I'm glad I finally got out of here because it looks really nice. I'm going to look in the book and see who was here last. Oh, here we go. Looks like back on April 17th and then April 11th. So not that long ago. Today's the 25th, I think. Okay, I'll make sure to sign that before I leave. But first I want to poke around this friggin' amazing cabin. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick blow through all, I think there's three rooms, and then we'll go back over and look at stuff in detail. One thing I noticed is that all the windows and even the door have these cute little curtains all over it and definitely a woman's touch in here, you know? It's not like some of these cabins you go to where you can tell it's just a bunch of dudes hanging out drinking whiskey. Okay, I'm backing up against the door so I can do a pano of the first room. This is like the living room. To the left when we walked in, there was like a couch that looks like you could sleep on it pretty comfortably and it's in pretty good shape. I would feel comfortable sleeping on this couch and even using these blankets that are on it. They don't look that dirty. This place is obviously really well cared for straighten that up for you <laughs> so there's a couch on the wall here there's a really cozy uh, cast iron stove that would probably really heat this place up awesome in the winter time then there's i don't know it almost looks like an antique store there's just bric-a-brac and little knickknacks and odds and ends everywhere i don't see a, an actual kitchen kitchen this looks like you could fill that with water and then use the tap <laughs> i guess and then uh, that's a kitchen counter, so you could use that for prepping, but there's no stove or anything. You'd have to bring your own camp stove. Although, who knows, when we get to looking around, there's probably a camp stove. Well, I'll just do it right now. I bet you anything there's a camp stove down here. Yep, oh boy, not just one, but three, and plenty of propane. Oh, and it looks like a lantern too. Oh gosh, there are all kind of supplies laid in this cabin. Holy moly. All right, and then in the middle, we got this really neat coffee table that the logbook is sitting on. I mean, first of all, this coffee table is hinged, isn't it? Don't these things open? Oh, maybe not. Maybe this side? Looks like old hinges. Oh, this side opens. Oh, look! Somebody left us a bottle of Fireball, and there's Fireball in it! Oh my gosh, I haven't had a drink in so long, because of this friggin' quarantine. I've been staying out in Tacopa, and, well, Barry doesn't drink, and I don't want to drink alone. I might have to take a nip of that Fireball before I leave. I think that would be okay. Alcohol content's probably high enough to kill any sort of virus that might be on it. Okay, so continuing along the kitchen, it looks like there's a sink basin, but it's not plumbed or anything, so... Basically, there's like a, a rudimentary kitchen, and, well, just a real cozy area to sit and chat. Like, there's two sofas. There's another sofa here. I don't know if that folds out to a bed or what, but... Man, with that fireplace and that coffee table, this is a... And then there's a chair there. You can have a real party in this cabin. Wow, it'd be cozy. Okay, and in the back wall, it looks like there's all kind of knickknacks and bric-a-brac that we'll, we'll take a look at. But then let's go back. There's two more rooms. This is the middle room that was all boarded up. Turn my light on here. Okay, it looks like it's a sort of a bathroom. <laughs> there's actually a bathtub, a real fiberglass bathtub in here. Uh, with a camp shower in it. 
Wow, I'm not really sure I'd want to take a shower in here though because look at the other half of the room. <laughs> it's really just more of like a storage room with all kinds of odds and ends. We'll definitely be poking through this. <laughs> Including this shopping cart that, golly, who even knows what store that was from. Okay, that's going to be a good room to poke through. But now there's one more room we got to go through and check this out. Okay, this third room is a bedroom. Oh, wow. And again, you could have a whole party here. Look at that. One, two, three, four single beds. Look at the picture of the guy on this bed. Who's this dude? I tried award. Oh, it must be an inside joke. You got some kind of special awards. Huh. Anyway, like I was saying, four single beds plus uh, two cots. Dang, you could sleep at least six people in here, you know? Put plenty of room here on the floor for the cots. And then there's a couple of really nice easy chairs, some really neat old trunks. Wow, this cabin's amazing. Let's see if there's anything in this trunk. I bet there's extra blankets. Yep. Oh my gosh, they thought of everything here. This is one of the, maybe if not the, best maintained cabins I've ever been to. And you know I've been to a lot of them. Okay, well, might as well just start going into detail in this room and then we'll work our way back. Okay, so again, plenty of really nice cozy curtains in here. Everything's got a woman's touch, nice pictures hanging on the wall. There's even like a cross over here. <laughs> Fine, good Christian folk. Look at these paintings. This one's cool, this horse painting, because there's a lot of wild horses in this area. That's probably what that's referring to. More supplies kind of laid in, some camp chairs. Oh my goodness. I mean, all the, what's interesting is all these beds even have uh, blankets on them, you know? Look at that. Like... Somebody made this quilt out of old blue jeans. Look at that. That is so cool. Okay, now let's go poke around in that middle room. So like I said, there's a bathtub and a camp shower, but then there's just all kinds of other stuff being stored in here. Look at this old lunchbox that's full of little hotel soaps and shampoos. Oh my goodness. Oh, look, even an extra knee pad in case you need a knee pad. <laughs> Some bug spray. All kind of supplies you might need. And then just little candles and things to make it nice. Curtains in here, but you don't need them because this window's boarded up, unfortunately. It's, the glass is cracked, wow. Okay, let's go look on this side. This looks like it's sort of just being used as a garage or storage. So no telling what's in some of these cabinets. So this one, oh my gosh, what's in here? Oh, old candles, wow, Christmas candles. Ah, oh, it'd be so cool to spend Christmas at this little cabin. I mean, just all these really neat old paintings and old tools, a couple kayak paddles, just in case you want to go kayaking in the desert. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Somebody must have partied here for St. Patrick's Day. Gosh, it smells like fruit cocktail syrup in this room. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I wonder if there's some kind of poison that smells like that. Oh, look, the roof in here, the ceiling in here is pretty busted, so... This is not rat proof in this room, which I don't know. That means rats could get in the whole thing. I don't get why the whole place isn't trashed. It's interesting. I mean, there is some rat poo on the floor here, but I mean, that first room we went in, it didn't look dirty at all in the bedroom either. Oh, wow, look at this old fishing tackle box with some hardware in it if you needed to do any repairs. Oh, there's the flag up top. If you wanted to let everyone know you were staying here, you would hoist that. All right, well, that was the middle room. Oh, bug zappery, I get, but they get some nasty flies out here. And then this shopping cart here in the middle. It's just, it's like people bring all these random antiques up here. You know, like look at this old kerosene lamp, this old candle, old sewing tins, tins, little f Indian thing. Wow. You know, it's, it's like looking through a antique store in here. It's a trip. Oh gosh, I can hear something banging around outside. Go peek through the window, make sure nobody's coming up on me. Well, there's my rig. I don't see anybody else. Maybe it was just the wind. Gosh, I hope so. It sounded like it was coming from back here. I got the window here. Yikers. Probably just the wind, but at the same time, it's a good reminder that I shouldn't hang out in here too long. So I am all by myself. And I'm way out in the middle of nowhere and there's no cell signal or anything. Okay, now let's go explore this first room that we came in in more detail. I'm going to start out back here where all these funky... I mean, people brought all this stuff out here. It blows my mind. These candlesticks. Look how many candlesticks are on this one table alone. Man, it'd be so neat to be sitting in here by candlelight. No wonder there was all those extra candles laid in. 
They're big into candle power here. Oh, here's the bookshelf. Plenty of books. Books about cowboys. Historic California. Well, we're not in California, but we're really close to it. Um, what else do we have here? Book about solar energy for houses, ranches, cottages, carpentry. Oh, you know, just little this, little that. And then look up here. <laughs> Every kind of oil lamp you could ever hope to want in your entire life. Holy moly. Look, there's even a candle chandelier. <laughs> Look at the curtains. I love this trim. Oh my goodness. It's like pom-pom trim on these red and white check curtains. How cute. Okay, this table here has got all kind of, well, artifacts and decorations like this old cowboy. This, oh, it's a boot, but it's a candle. And then this looks like all rocks and stuff that they found, people found in the area. Like, look at these old arrowheads, old obsidian arrowhead. That's cool. I bet they found that right here in this valley. And that looks like a little tiny arrowhead too. I don't know what kind of rock that is. That's cool. People found that and then just left it here for everyone to enjoy. I, I can really get behind that. Oh, here's a little tiny radio for emergencies. If you had to like try to figure out what was going on with the coronavirus <laughs> while you're holed up in here quarantining. Oh my gosh, what if you did quarantine from the coronavirus here in this cabin? You stayed out here like until it was all blown over. You could, as long as you had, I don't know about the spring, but if you had water, I could stay here for a few months easy. Okay, let's see. Here's some pictures of, oh gosh, look, donkeys having sex. These look like maybe some old uh, pictures of people who used to maintain this cabin. Huh, interesting. And then let's see, more candles. Just candles and knickknacks. Um, oh, it looks like up here the underground explorers were, or at least somebody who belongs to the underground explorers was here. That's a big group of people who explore mines. Oh, look at this old box. Cleopatra needles. Oh my gosh, that's gotta be super old. What's in it? Ah, uh, a candle, shocker. <laughs> Man, I've never seen so many candles and candle holders as I have in this dang cabin. Oh, look, there's some tequila, silver tequila. So if I don't feel like the fireball, I could have that. Hmm, what kind of food is laid in here? We got some pepper, bay leaves, parsley flakes, thyme, a few spices, but I wonder if there's any food. Oh, you know where I bet the food is? I bet there's food in these cabinets. Oh yeah, look, we got some canned stuff, some chili. Oh, that's my favorite, my preferred brand of chili, Amy's Organic, it's vegetarian, love it. Good stuff for Frito pie. Soup, peanut butter, some sugar. Oh man, how cool is this cabin? It blows my mind though that it's not rat proof. And like, yeah, there's a few little bits of rat poop in here, but not really. It's pretty nice. Uh, so there really isn't a lot of food laid in here. I thought it might just be because it's not rat proof. Let's see what's on this side. Oh, pots and pans. Oh, here's some Rubbermaid bins. Probably have some stuff laid in there because they're rat proof. Oh no, they're not even closed. Just styrofoam plates, stuff like that. Oh, and then there's a dart board here. <laughs> so you can drink some beers and play darts. Wow, it just blows my mind that this place is this nice and tidy and it's not even rat proof. And that makes me think I want to leave something here uh, to make up for the sip of fireball that I'm going to take. So to see what I have in my car that's uh, that rats won't be able to eat. Anyway, I guess I might as well go ahead and have a seat and sign the old log book here. And there are a lot of, uh, a lot of um, entries in this log book. So apparently this cabin does get visited quite a bit. Let's see. Today, what I say it was? 25th. Okay, I wrote, beautiful cabin, so cozy and well-kept. Much respect to those who maintain it and to all who visit. Wonder hussy. I figure it's best to, you know, keep these things short and sweet. You know, it's not like I stayed here or anything. Okay, let's see. Should I drink a sip of this fireball? This is a testament to my good faith in humanity that I would drink a random or a sip from a random bottle of booze that I found in an abandoned cabin in the middle of the desert. But the people who maintain these cabins are cool and, well... This one is for all of you. Woo! I gotta go get a baby wipe out of my car so I can sanitize the top of that. I didn't even think about it. I just took a swig out of it, which I know is pretty gross, especially in these times of coronavirus. But like I said, this is 
66 proof. Uh, technically, I don't think that is high enough uh, alcohol content to kill the virus, but well, no one's been here since April 11th, so that's like two weeks ago, and I think I read that the virus can only survive two weeks anyways. Might have one more nip. Woo! Wow! Now I'm ready for some more adventures. <laughs> okay, I just went back out to my car so that I could get a sani wipe to sanitize the um, top of that bottle. And also, I got some packets of instant coffee, some instant Bustello that my friend John from Beatty gave me. Thank you, John, if you're watching this. Uh, I'm gonna take a few of those out and leave them here in this cabin in case a future visitor uh, forgot to bring their coffee and, well, needs a little morning pick-me-up. Now, I don't know, I guess I'll put them in this jar with the sugar. I feel like that way the rats can't get it. There we go. Now there's coffee and sugar for the next person. <laughs> oh man, wow, I sure am sad to leave this cabin. I mean, gosh, I was only in here for what, 20 minutes? But, I don't know, I'm alone, you know? What's the point, I'm gonna sit here and twiddle my thumbs? And besides, there's all those other things in the area that I wanna go check out. Bye cabin, see you next time. Okay, I'm gonna close this up just the way we found it and put the screw back through to hold it in place. Now it's locked up tighter than a you know what. Okay, now before we leave, I'm just gonna poke around the grounds a bit and see, well, just see if there's anything else interesting that we missed. Okay, first I'll go around the side here. I mean, that looks like it's just an old corral. There's nothing much to see down there. And then around the back. Oh, that must be where the spring is. Look, you can actually see green grass. Oh yeah, there is some standing water here. Wow. I mean, that water looks pretty gross, but if you were lost out in the desert starving to death, you'd be happy to see it. Oh, look in the middle there, it does get pretty deep. And then look at the view beyond it. <laughs> That is some high lonesome, as Louis L'Amour would say. Oh wow, look at this. Okay, walking over from the green area back to the cabin, there's this big depression with standing water in the bottom and some pretty tall bamboo reeds, or bamboo type reeds. So that must have been the spring and there's pipes stuck in it. So I'm guessing that's where they got their drinking water. Man, far out. This little cabin, well, it's so different in some ways from the cabin I explored yesterday. Uh, that one up in the mountains, different in a lot of ways, but very similar in a lot of ways, you know? Which one would you rather live in? Up in the mountains with those beautiful pine trees and flowers and wild horses? Or out here on this amazing high desert plain with these incredible sweeping vistas and wild horses? Hmm, guess it's just a matter of opinion or a matter of preference. Okay, here's the first trailer. It's a truck without the wheels and without the cab. Oh, funny. And then it's just full of old barbed wire and detritus, basically. But let's check out this old trailer. This trailer kind of reminds me of my own little travel trailer. Which, by the way, my poor little travel trailer has just been sitting at my house unloved and unused because... You know, all the festivals are being canceled because of coronavirus. Not even any Burning Man this year. So I don't know. I probably won't use that thing all year. Oh, wow. Look. Look inside this one. This is completely trashed. But it's kind of cool. Look at the old stove. Dixie. Oh, man. Looks like it was pretty cozy at one time. Little cabinets up there. But gosh, not anymore. Okay. Far friggin' out. I'm so glad I took the time to drive to this little homestead. I mean, I was sort of in the area anyways, I guess. <laughs> but it was totally worth the trip. And even though I'm alone and I don't have anyone to share it with, guess what? I do. <laughs> you. I hope you enjoyed checking out this little cabin site. And well, if you enjoy watching my videos, I make new ones every Wednesday and I'm very consistent about it. And well, if you want to help me pay for my gas or something like that, or buy me a pack of Bustello, uh, there's links in my description to my PayPal and my Patreon and all that stuff. So check it out. And also make sure to, well, if you like the video, like it, and then comment below which cabin you'd rather live in, this desert cabin or the one up in the mountains the other day. I'm curious to see which one people liked more. Anyway, I'm gonna go uh, exploring yonder in the mountains across that dry lake bed. There's all kind of good stuff hidden up in them there hills 
So stay tuned.